convenience usually does come with a cost. It's either going to come in the cost of finances or it's going to come at the cost of your health. Your, your health. I mean, let's be real here. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with technology. That's what we. That's one right. thing that humans want to do is we want to we want to work smarter, not harder. I get that. I agree with that. Work smarter, mm-hmm. but not harder. But you got to do something to compensate for that loss of activity. Right. Right. That's really what we're, you're saying here. Yeah. Welcome to Cut the Crap with Beth and Matt, the world's number one no bullshit health and fitness podcast. Are you ready to cut the crap with your diet and exercise, get strong as fuck, and build a healthy relationship with food? Then you've come to the right place. Show your support for the podcast by joining our Patreon community, where you get exclusive content which consists of monthly workouts you can do at home or at the gym, monthly challenges that are either strength, habit, or mindset based and access to hundreds of lower-calorie, higher-protein, family-friendly recipes. And now all Patreon members receive exclusive access to a private Facebook group. Now no, let's cut the, the crap. crap. Nerdle, welcome back. Nerdle, what is up? Not much. How you doing, my friend? I am good. I'm good. You're good? I'm fucking phenomenal, actually. Yeah. I'm happy. Guess why? I've got an iced coffee, but it's a bonus iced coffee. Because What does that mean? Well, what it means is I bought one yesterday, put it in the fridge, and then I drink it. And I, w- I just opened up my fridge, and there was a nice iced coffee waiting for me. So I was like, fuck, yeah, thank you. Perfect. What thank a- you, Past Matt. <laughs> what, a, what a gift. <laughs> yeah, a little gift from myself. Yes, my, my I love it. Forgetfulness. <laughs> I love that. That's awesome. I got my old morning coffee, but it still works. Yeah, it still works. It still works. Mm-hmm. Got to hydrate, or not hydrate, got to caffeinate. Caffeinate, hydrate, all of it. Well, it's funny because I got my water over here in my other hand. So mm-hmm. water got, hand, got mine too. Together. There we go. I got liquid everywhere. <laughs> We've always got our liquids with us, right? Isn't that the funniest part? Like when we get together so or when we travel and like we just we're just walking around with like our water, our diet soda, our coffee. <laughs> Fucking protein drink. <laughs> protein I mean, we have drink. it all. <laughs> totally. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. yeah so that's why I have to go to the oh. bathroom every five minutes on a road trip. Right. For sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's a, that's a downfall of staying constantly hydrated is having to pee all the time when you're traveling for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Sucks. sucks more so when you're on a long road trip or something or a flight, a long flight. Oh yeah. I hate, yeah. I hate getting up in on a flight and using the restroom, even though I sit in the aisle almost exclusively every time I like, I'll pay extra to get an aisle seat. So it's so easy for me to do it, but I still don't mm-hmm. because, usually because there's a long fucking line and those bathrooms are disgusting. Ooh, did you hear? Did you hear about the oh, fuck? I know what you're the, gonna say <laughs> the flight that had to turn around from Delta, the poop flight. Yeah. Oh my I did. god, I did. what a nightmare. That's that su- that sucks, man. I, I would have I feel bad for that bumped. person. Like I don't know what the fuck happened. Some obviously some type of a medical emergency, like for that something like that severe to happen. I mean, flight. yeah. The flight yeah. had to turn around. Could you imagine like being on that flight? I being don't that person, understand. even for that matter. Like, did the person you- obviously not make it to the bathroom? I don't know. I don't know the full story, but I, I, I think they were trying to make it to the bathroom because the way it sounded like like it was going up and down the aisle and it was like explosive. Some like, it, yeah, we're getting graphic here, but it was I saw some pictures like people recorded videos and took pictures of it and stuff like it was it was, it was oh, bad. That, that poor person. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So now so now it's the poop flight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad I was not on that flight. For sure. And that was Delta. I usually fly with Delta. Oh, too. fuck. Things I mean, be imagine being enclosed in like that tight quarters with fucking yeah. explosive diarrhea. I mean, That's holy good. shit. For sure. I mean, that, that flight had to turn around. It was a, I think they were flying to like Spain or something. And they were only a couple of hours mm. into that long overseas flight and they had to turn around back to Atlanta. Oh, yeah. No. Completely. They complete, um, they, they ripped out the entire carpet of the, of the airplane, completely disinfected it. And the people like, I guess they got back onto the plane like eight hours or something later. And they're like, actually it's a brand new airplane. They're like, it's cleaner than it was before we got onto it the first time. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's an event. That's definitely an event. A catastrophic (laughs) event. (laughs) For sure. For sure. The old poop plane. Oh man. Um, so I did my 10K race this, le- this past weekend. Okay, let's hear about it. So, oh, the race director was like, where's your friend, Matt? I'm like, oh, uh, he hurt his ankle. She said to say hi. Yeah. Uh, she's bummed that she's bummed that you didn't make it. Next year. Next year. Um, yeah. So I would definitely do that again. Honestly, it was the hardest thing I've ever done because it was so vertical. You've never hiked up Mount Batty with me, I don't think. How do you know? Wait, what's okay. Mount, which, which one's Mount Batty? 
Mm. Mount Batty, it's like this road that you go up and it's like there's a tower with a star on top um, and no. you see all of Camden. Okay. But so the it's called like the uh, the Mount Batty Road or whatever. It's, it would be like going up Mount Washington to the, to the top, but you drive. You can also okay. take a hike up there, but it's not Mount Washington steep. But Mount Washington also has a road race. So think of it like you're starting off vertical, like running vertical. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's like, what a fucking nightmare. But then you have like maybe 20 minutes of going back down. uh, It's called the carriage trail. And then you turn around and you go back up and then you're going back through the other side of the mountain that, which is all entirely rock. So you can't really run. You're kind of like hiking very fast, as fast as as you can. And so I felt really, what's cool is feeling really strong, but also knowing that this, it, it was very challenging and I'm like, fuck this like the whole time. But I felt okay. I didn't feel like I was going to die. It just was very hard. <laughs> yeah. And it rained the night before. So it was a lot of mud, a lot of mud. The rocks oh, those were, rocks were probably slippery as fuck. They were slippery. And so towards the end, when I'm going down, I was like, I, I just want to be done. My hands were swelling. I mean, it was very hot and humid. And so I was running down. And before I know it, I was like fucking on the ground. It happened so fast. My phone flew. And then I knew I was like bleeding somewhere. So I looked and my arm had a puncture wound bleeding and my knee was really fucked up. And I was like, okay, I don't think I need stitches. Nothing's broken. Let's fucking keep going. So I just kept going. (laughs) I was like, I'm a fucking badass. I got blood and fucking mud everywhere. And I'm running through this finish line with all smiles. It was so fun. It was so fun. I love that. What a badass. Well, well done. I Beth. fucking love it. And now I already signed up for my, my next race, which is going to be um, the Manchester Road Race, which is in on Turkey Day in, in uh, Manchester, Connecticut. So me, my sister and brother are going to run it together. Gotcha. Which which is that your sister in law or which my you, sister, your sister, my I didn't know you had a sister, didn't it? Yeah. You, you don't know. I did have I? a sister. Yeah. She lives in Connecticut. I don't know if I did. I don't know if I did. I didn't I really talk about her that much. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, we go there. I wasn't sure if you were talking about your sister-in-law or not. So no, my sister. So we're all three going to do it together, which is kind of fun. That's cool. Hell yeah. yeah. Turkey day. Gobble trot. Yeah, that's right. (laughs) Gobble motherfucker. Cool. Cool. How are you doing? Uh, I'm doing pretty well. Getting ready to go to Oregon really quickly for the weekend for, for the funeral for, you know, Mel's husband. Yeah. Um, I, I'm going to make the most of it while I'm there. I I am going to, I, I'm flying in tomorrow the mm-hmm. service isn't until Saturday. So on Friday, I'm going to, I'm flying into Portland. Yeah. Um, I'm going to travel down about four or five hour drive from Portland airport down to um, Crater Lake mm-hmm. uh, National Park. Okay. Um, and I'm going to, I'm going to camp in the, in the national forest right there by Crater Lake Thursday night. I'm going to camp in my car. I, I got a rental SUV, so I'm going to do that. And mm-hmm. then um, Friday, I'm going to camp or a uh, hike crater lake hike down into the lake go swimming um nice. like in the bluest clearest cleanest that's water the one that i distance. have all the fucking mo- ig like yeah, shorts saved on my sure. thing for my bucket list i'm sure we've sent it to each other a couple of times probably so. fucking asshole oh, I'm I'm gonna- <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i'm gonna make the most of it i'm gonna spend the day exploring that nice um, i guess i was looking online and like they say you only need one to two days to explore na- um that park anyway so mm-hmm. perfect amount of time for me and then sunday i'm going to explore the pacific coast in Oregon and, and everything, and then head mm-hmm. slowly back up to the airport before coming yeah. home Monday morning. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Action packed weekend. Right. Though. Yeah. Yeah. Um, other than that, it's getting cold here already. I'm like, I'm wearing really? a sweatshirt right now. I'm, I'm, oh, I'm it's hot here. Yeah. It's still it's hot. Very, it's very humid. I have like a tank top on. I feel like I need to put shorts on. I have Jeez. pants on right now. And I went to like my dog out and I'm like sweating. 70s? Um, Let me see what it, it might be like 70, but it's just the humidity. I think that's, that's the killer. It is in the morning time. It's 71, like 71. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like right now it's one o'clock. It's, it's warm out now, but prior to noon, it's still get, it's still pretty chilly out. So. Yeah. Yeah. But that's fall for you. It's getting here. It's getting here. Yeah. By the time this episode so, comes out, it might be uh, officially fall. I think. What Maybe that, September 20, September 21st or 22nd. Yeah. So right around that time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, what do we want to talk about today? Well. Well, I think we kind of are going to build on what we've already been talking about. Yeah, which anyway, conveniently is happening. (laughs) Convenience. (laughs) So we're going to talk about convenience killing us. Yeah. Convenience is killing us. Convenience. And okay, here's the thing. Before anybody gets triggered, I really want you to actually just listen. 
and maybe just evaluate some of the things that you do and why you do them. Um, and is it really necessary? Okay. Right. Yeah. Just some thoughts. Like I, I always, with everything, like take what you want and leave the rest. Like we're Absolutely. not, um, whatever, whatever we're going to say, we're not judging anybody. We're all part of this together, basically. So For sure. awareness is key and it all starts there and you can't change uh, anything if you're not aware of it. It's Bingo. just pure and simple, right? So this is something I've been discussing in my stories because I feel like a lot, and we work with our clients with this stuff and it, Stems from like we were talking about last week about our movement and increasing our need mm-hmm. and what you can do to do that. So yeah. right now, can, right? <laughs> convenience. <laughs> Let's think about what does convenience mean in terms of like nowadays. Okay. We have Instacart instead of, you know, that's makes grocery shopping basically very easy and you don't have to do it. What what else is something that's very convenient that takes Over away eats. from Uber Eats, yes. And, that, and, and take that a little bit, step further, fast food, right? I mean, even if we mm-hmm. went and got that fast food ourselves, drives, yeah, drive drive throughs Lots lots of things. Our lives are convenient as fuck now compared to three, four, five decades ago. Oh, yeah. The microwaves. Microwaves, um, washing machines, computers. Right. Computers, phones. Uh, iPhones, Amazon, um, you know, Target delivery, Walmart delivery, Literally all kinds you of literally have Amazon deliver something to you two hours from now if you wanted yeah. to. Like it's yeah. insane. Not me, but <laughs> not you there in <laughs> Maine. Yeah. Not me. And so when you think about it, like I think convenience is a really good thing. Like none none of these things are really bad, right? Yeah. Um, especially for people that are maybe handicapped or, you know, have a harder time leaving the house because of certain disabilities, anxiety, neurodivergence, where, you know, of course, you know, that could make someone's life a lot easier. But for the able-bodied human, you are basically becoming more, not basically, you are becoming more sedentary because you're using these things and increasingly gaining weight because of it. Mm Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, we, and we know this, I mean, we, if you talk about weight gain, I mean, the obesity epidemic started roughly in the Mm -hmm. seventies. I I was looking at some research coming into this episode and about 1976 to 1980 is when we really saw a significant spike in obesity. Mm -hmm. Um, And what started happening in like the seventies and even backtracking it a little bit before that sixties and the fifties, because technology does take some time to catch up. Right. Right. I know, Mm -hmm. I know the first automated hand washing machine that was widely available was came out in like the late 50s right Mm -hmm. um but then with the in in like the 60s and 70s we have Mm -hmm. things like computers started showing up let me find the graphic here that i was looking at er, um, earlier so essentially our life expectancy and started increasing in about 1950 to 1960 and then um obesity started increasing in the in the 70s Mm -hmm. and in 1970 we saw a drastic increase technology making our lives easier okay mm-hmm. computers cell phones food delivery and and we talk about like computers how did computers make our lives easier well we're not going into the off or we're we're no longer doing these physically intensive manual labor jobs they've been right. replaced with computers a lot of us are working in offices now mm-hmm. so that's another way that technology has made our lives easier and better it's definitely improved our life but right. we need to be mindful of the impact that that technology has on us and our overall health, because now we're no longer moving. We're no longer exerting energy. We're no longer working our body. Right. Absolutely. Um, And this conversation kind of started because I started talking about, I noticed, I'm going to bring this up because it's, I think. Yeah, no, I think we definitely need to talk about um, it. I I think the the way that I got blown out of proportion was insane. Yeah. So I, I started noticing only because I'm a visualist. I create recipes, things like that, you know? So I started noticing a lot of people posting their food on paper plates for everyone to see on the internet, right? And so I would be like, why are people... To me, it's not anything I grew up with. I grew up with washing the dishes with my parents. We didn't have a dishwasher. Paper plates are were, are never a thought in my mind because it's not something that I grew up with. Um, so I'm like, why are people, all, all these people using paper plates? It doesn't make sense. Like you're making this beautiful meal. You're taking the time out. You're washing your pans and pots, right? To present your beautiful meal on the internet on a fucking paper plate. Now to me, as a visualist looking at it, it's like, why would you, I don't know, that just seems so weird to me. Why wouldn't you use a real plate? It's just more visually, aesthetically beautiful. 
And to, well, I don't if know. that's the goal of what you're posting, which is what the context of what you were talking about. That's what I was talking about. And people were getting upset at me talking, they saying I was a classist, ableist. Um, I can't, you know, you're you're now like making fun of mothers that are busy and they have children and now they feel bad they're using a paper plate. I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, you're not talking about you weren't talking, talking about those fucking, fucking people going there about right now. posting food and yes. putting it on a shitty paper plate. It's like presentation. And also I'm thinking, isn't this not cost effective? Also, that's it's not. that's not really good for the environment. Um, it, it, it's just not. And to how me, is it like, cla- like, how's it classist? Because, I, I don't know. Because but, it literally costs money to continue to buy paper yeah, products. And they're like, you're you're privileged, just throw away. like, I'm privileged. I'm using a fucking reusable plate. Like how am I, how is that? You know, you can go to the freaking, um, Salvation Army and buy, you know, dishware there and not re having to buy $20 a month on your paper plates. Like th- that to me is wasteful. I don't see, and this is just me personally, how it's so hard to wash a plate. I, I don't understand. Like if you're going to wash your pots and pans, okay, why wouldn't you wash just up? The plate is probably the easiest thing to fucking wash. You play, I love washing plates. It's so fucking easy. And, you know, for me, and, and I, a lot of people were like, you know, well, I'd want to spend more time with my family. And I'm like, well, why wouldn't you have them help and you in the kitchen washing family dishes? Chores. That's what. That's what I did. It's like we all washed together. One person washed, one person dried. We were hanging yes. out. No one was separate. And in my mind, I'm like, a lot of the times these days, the kids go up in their room. They're on the fucking computers. I just don't know. And it's also another form of meat, right? We're like, yeah, totally. you're, you're moving your body. And also we tell you to like mop the floors, sweep the floors. Now you have a rumba doing that for you. So that's another form of technology. I'm going right now, probably down downstairs. So. <laughs> Do you have one? I do have one. Do you? Uh, yeah, <laughs> sure. Well, it, it's a godsend for me. I still, I still, um, at least twice a week, vacuum and sweep and things like that. But for me, having a German Shepherd, it is a oh, lifesaver. Yeah, yeah. De- I mean, definitely. I mean, that's a lot of fucking cleaning that I would be doing. But that that further backs up the point that you're making, honestly. Yeah. yeah. I'm just wondering. It's just making us more less likely to move all these convenient things like throwing out the plates um and not doing the dishes and having the rumba and maybe you have a house cleaner. Like I said. Please, I'm not judging you. I, I have had house cleaners. I've done, you know, all this stuff. I'm just, we're just trying to get to the bottom of like, maybe take a look at why are you doing these things? And is it really necessary? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's necessary I, for some people to use paper plates. Obviously, I'm sure. not judging you for using paper plates. I just want you to take a look at like, you know, why you're, why, where's your mindset when it comes to this? Yeah. The most ridiculous thing is you, I, I know the post that you were talking about. I saw it mm-hmm. and you were literally talking about people that are posting food, the recipes and their meals online. Yes. Like why, like, why are you posting it on a paper plate? Because if you're, you're trying to get people to look at it, right. You want it to be pretty. You want the presentation to be there. So why would they mm-hmm. be posting it or putting it on a paper plate? I get that. So I don't understand why people got so fucking triggered by it. Because they immediately take offense. They don't like a lot of people on the internet do. Yeah. Um. They immediately think that I'm judging them. And why? Why would you feel judged? Is there some reason that you feel guilty for Maybe using a paper plate? About something. Because for me, if someone said that on the internet, I would look at the. I would be like, yeah, whatever. Who gives a shit? Like, right. I don't care. Like, take what you want and leave the rest. Like, not everything is for you on the internet. But mm-hmm. so many feelings people are upset not facts. about it. Right. Feelings are not facts. I, I even said I was like, you know, imagine me making a recipe video, and then I'm like presenting it on a fucking Dixie paper plate. It wouldn't be the same. It would not just wouldn't be the same. Um, yeah. And that's what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Take, take, many, pride, take pride in your meals that you're going to present. <laughs> how many professional chefs do you know that are trying to get you to come to the restaurant that are taking pictures and, and and they're putting it on a paper plate? They probably don't even have a paper plate in the restaurant, you know? Yeah. So Anyway, besides that, that, paper plates. <laughs> <laughs> you, I bet you never thought in a million years that you would be getting into arguments with people online about paper fucking plates. No, but it's insane. It, and like I said, it's not something I grew up with. It's not something that I'm used to. It, it wouldn't be even a thought in my mind to go out and buy paper plates as a means yeah. to use them at family dinner I, I, because I'm not yeah. used to it. Yeah, for sure. Now, I, I, I like what you said. I think you mentioned Iris messaged you or something or she was talking about it after the fact of how. This convenience, especially as it pertains to Instacart, was actually mm-hmm. detrimental to her, right? Yeah. And she wait, started why? noticing. Iris, a coach on my team, messaged me and because I was talking about the Instacart and convenience in my stories. 
And she said, you know, I started using Instacart and I noticed that I was getting things I didn't need, spending more money than I needed to. Um, and I also noticed it was harder for me to get my steps. And she's like, oh, I've been using Instacart a lot more than ever. And she goes, I can't, I took the app off my phone and I don't use it because that, you know, the grocery store is where I get most of my steps. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's a good two, 3000 steps right there. Yeah. Yeah. If you're at the grocery store for 30 to 60 minutes, I mean, you're walking mm -hmm. around that whole time. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's a really good example of how that convenience is definitely having a negative impact on her finances mm -hmm. because if she's buying shit she doesn't need and also her, her overall health because now she's not as active. Yeah. And, and convenience usually does come with a cost. It's either going to come in the cost of finances or it's going to mm -hmm. come at the cost of your, your, health. Your, your health. I mean, let's be real here. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with technology. That's what we that's one right. thing that humans want to do is we want to we want to work smarter, not harder. I get that. I agree with that. Work smarter, mm -hmm. but not harder. But you got to do something to compensate for that loss of activity. Right, right. That's really what we're, you're saying here. Yeah, exactly. Um, and also, I think that convenience can make people a little bit more stressed than they need to be. How so? Because this is just my my thoughts, right? You're doing things conveniently, like you're you're ordering Instacart. So someone's doing your, you know, grocery shopping for you. So you're going to fill in that time gap with something else. You're you keep filling in these time gaps because mm -hmm. of convenience, and then you're overall overstimulated. You're doing things that you probably don't want to do because you think you have more time when you really don't have more time. You're not managing your time wisely because of convenience. Now I don't know if you want to play off that, Matt. What are your thoughts? I like that because of convenience. Yeah, because you're essentially what you're doing is you're multitasking, right? Mm -hmm. And we know that humans are dog shit at multitasking. We are not efficient at it, right? right. And that's just instilled a, instilled at a, uh, in us from an early age, especially in the hustle culture that we that we all grew up with. You know, work work hard, work hard, work hard, right? Mm -hmm. um, work hard, play hard, and things like that. So you you we we kind of get our self worth and the value in ourself from how busy we perceive ourselves to be. Yeah. So with that in mind, we're we're constantly distracting ourselves. We're, and we just talked about this yesterday in group coaching with our mm. with we were talking about self care actually, and one of our our clients um, she mentioned how she uh, she tells herself that she's so busy that she's too busy, but really what she's doing is she's distracting herself. Mm. Ooh, she was very she was being bru she was being brutally honest, and I love mm -hmm. that we're in week eight of the program and people are starting to be very vulnerable. Yeah. And, She's like, no, actually, I used to tell myself I was too busy all the time, but I was yep. just distracting myself from mm -hmm. the work that I needed to do on myself. How many of you guys are doing the same thing? Ask yourself uh, that. How many of you are distracting yourself with TikTok, Instagram, this podcast, mm -hmm. perhaps? Yeah. So if, if we're going to be a distraction to you, don't listen to us. Go do, go do what you need to do. And or then, go on a walk and listen to us. There you go. There you go. <laughs> but, but these are you these know? things all serve as distractions. Netflix. Mm -hmm. Alcohol, distraction, smoking weed can be a distraction. Any of these mm -hmm. things can be a distraction. Um, and it's a way for you to disconnect and it's a way for you to not deal with the shit that you need to deal with. And that's yeah. really, that's kind of the take that I'm going to, the spin I'm going to take on it. Yeah. And the people that get defensive and angry about this, it's maybe because we're triggering a thought process in your mind that it <laughs> could be a possibility that this is true for you. Yeah. If someone we don't like looking me, at ourselves, we, we don't. don't want us to be the problem. We don't mm -hmm. want... I, I, yeah, I'm the first to admit, like, if someone was to tell me, you know what, Beth, da, 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 this, immediately, I would, when I was drinking, I would get defensive. Like, yeah. what do you mean? There's no way I'm like that. Fuck you. Yeah. Um, but then when you sit down and think about it, you're like, okay, actually, there's some truth in that. And that's why I'm getting a little bit angry about it. Because we don't like to look or admit that sometimes we need to take a look at the things we're doing. They may not be anything that the most health conscious choices. Yeah. Yeah. Convenience is great, but when we're doing it, when we're, we're, when convenience l rules your life and it's replacing things that you can do, but you just don't want to because you're a lazy fuck, I'm, that's that, that's that's where the, the line gets drawn. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm lazy too. I say this all the time. I am inherently lazy. It I, it takes a lot of work for me to not be lazy to tell my lazy yeah. self to shut the fuck up. I'm with Seriously. you, Matt. <laughs> if I listened to my la lazy self, I would still be 75 pounds overweight. I would still be mm -hmm. playing video games 10 hours a day. I would still be drinking two uh, two liters of Mountain Dew every day, mm -hmm. eating pizza, drinking a case of beer five, six times a week. That's what I would be doing if I let myself be lazy like I want to do. Right. Period. 
I'm glad uh, that I live in Maine and don't have access to Uber. I don't have access to Uber Eats. I don't have access to Grubhub. I have I don't have access to even Target, which is an hour and a half for me. I have Walmart and TJ Maxx. That is it. Um, and then, you know, a couple of local grocery stores and like Maine Sport and things that are like just way overpriced local stores. Um, not very convenient to get your kids school clothes. And honestly, if I had access to Grubhub, I'd be worried. I'd be worried for my husband because he'd probably be like, oh my God, let's go order this. So, you know, I don't need that stress of knowing that anything I can I wanted could get delivered at the drop of a hat. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. I don't want it. I don't why want to why, do it. Why, why don't you want it, bad? I'm like, what? <laughs> you know, it's just, I'd rather make my food. And here's the thing, like we tell people, you know, keep your trigger foods out of the house, right? If you really want something, you're going to go out and get it. Well, if you really want something now, you could just fucking make a phone call, get on your phone and order it and it'll be delivered. You're not actually going to worry about getting in your car and going out and getting it. Like for me, if I really wanted something, I'd have to get in my fucking car and go get it. And I'm less likely to actually go in my car to get it because of that. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm definitely guilty of that, Beth. I've got Uber Eats here. There's mm-hmm. been so many times where I had everything I needed to make a nutritious meal at home, but I was being a lazy fuck. And so I ordered takeout instead, mm-hmm. literally. And that's a, that's expensive as fuck. Mm-hmm. I'm getting a lot more calories in that way. And I'm not getting the nutritious foods that I need. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm the first to admit it. I've de- I definitely take advantage of these convenience, the, the conveniences that are afforded to us, for sure. Right. This is, these are first world problems to have. Yeah, we <laughs> they really. And are. if you're on a health and fitness journey, like we help a lot of people, this is a hard thing to navigate with people because this is what they're used to. So having to actually make your meals rather th- rather than calling Uber Eats or Grubhub, it's it's a it's another like learning ha- habit. It's building new, another habit yeah. that you have to do. So it's actually just an extra step in your health journey because of this. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And the way you do one thing is the way you do everything too. Mm-hmm. So if you're gonna if you're gonna half ass things and, and look for the easy way out, most importantly, take the convenient way out. Like that's that's gonna be it's gonna kind of glare rear its ugly head at, at some point with yeah. that. Yeah. If there's one thing we can all agree on, it's that life is hard. And with that comes a level of stress that can often be debilitating. Balancing your mental and physical health often seems like you need a PhD to achieve. And so often we are only able to focus on one or the other, which can lead to a less than enjoyable life. And that's why I loved Cure Nutrition Serenity Gummies. From coaching calls to leadership meetings with my team, to tapping into my creativity for new content, to closing business deals, and even interviewing guests for this podcast, the Serenity Gummies have proven to be a valuable part of my self-care routine. I take them daily to help manage my stress and anxiety, and doing this allows me to perform at my absolute best, which helps me serve others to my absolute best. Formulated with their trinity of ingredients, a blend of full-spectrum cannabinoids, functional mushrooms, and adaptogens, Serenity Gummies are your answer to finding calm in the chaos that we call life. Right now, Cured is extending an exclusive offer to you, our listeners. You can grab a bag of Serenity Gummies for 20% off by visiting www.curednutrition.com ctc and using coupon code CTC at checkout. That's C U R E D nutrition.com slash CTC and coupon code CTC at checkout to save 20%. So, what are you waiting for? Pop a gummy and protect your peace and let's cut the crap together. So many times when people are starting a health and wellness journey, they just focus on the physical component and the exercise component, right? That's right. that's all I got to do is go to the gym four times a week for an hour and I'm going to be mm-hmm. healthy. Yeah. That's bullshit. You can do yeah. just that and you're, I'm, I'm sorry, but you won't be healthy. Yeah. So the things we're talking about, these convenience mm-hmm. items are literally impacting your health. Mm-hmm. Literally, impact. The things we are doing outside of the gym are more important than the things we are doing in the gym. Yeah. This health and wellness thing, you know, when me and Matt are coaching, it's a lot of mindset work. It is. Um, and so when you hear us talk about these things. We very rarely talk calories. It really, it really comes down to your mindset. So changing your thought patterns and the way you do things is very, very important. A part of your journey. It's like Matt said, it's not just counting calories and fucking protein and fiber. We have to get to the root of why you do certain things so we can re- replace a bad habit, but replacing habits is not always easy. And so no, this is what, what, no. we, what we help people do. So that's why we talk about stuff like this because it makes you think, and it may, may not make you happy, but it it may make you think. Yeah. Yeah, we're challenging our beliefs. That's what we're doing. We're challenging yeah. our belief system. And if you are listening to this podcast right now, you're probably 
from what I know from our analytics, you're in between the ages of 40 and 59 years old. That's like our, our demographic right there. And you're probably a woman because 90% of our listeners are women. So that's 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 really if you if you look at it from from that, what we what you all grew up with, what we grew up with, it was that just go to the gym and exercise the fat away and exercise to be healthy and things like that. Right. So that's the and that's what we're trying to get people away from is that type of thinking. And so we're challenging our belief systems. And when we challenge our belief systems, when you hear things that are contradictory to what you know and what you've experienced, you might get upset about that. Because you you might feel betrayed, you might feel like you were lied to, or maybe you feel like we're wrong. I don't know what I don't know what that feeling is. But if you're if you have a negative reaction to those types of things, why? Ask yourself why am I reacting this way? If you are triggered, all the trigger is is it's showing you something that hasn't been healed within yourself. Mm -hmm. So if you look at it that way, you get triggered. That's something that needs to be healed. That is something you are neglecting to heal. Yeah. At the end of the day, that's with your relationship with food, with the spouse, when you're when you have the constant arguments, every time that something gets brought up, you get triggered and you fight. Right. That's something that you're neglecting to heal. So yeah. if we look at it that way, then, too, is it, it really does come all down to ourselves and what's what's the way we talk to ourselves and the way we think to our, uh, think about ourselves. You know, these mm-hmm. are thinking errors. Thinking right. errors is really what it comes down to. Yeah. Our logical brain and our emotional brain are constantly at war. Mm-hmm. What happens is our emotional brain is usually leading the show, dictating our responses to everything. We want to tell our, we want to get our emotional side under control. We want to let our logical side dictate the way that we do things. Okay. Yeah. But that's not easy. That's that's not easy. Your brain will fight tooth and nail to let your emotions dict- run the show. Mm-hmm. Your fight or flight response run the show. Your yeah. brain loves that. Your brain loves that. And that's why when you see a post, you automatically get on the defense and right think away. that the post is talking to you and start calling people names and like, you don't know me. I work 70 hours a week. No one asked you any of this. Like, I'm not talking to you. I don't know anyone's situation. All I am voicing is something that I've been noticing. And so you got to not get so crazy and serious about a, a post that may not be pertaining to you at all. Right. Right. And the whole working 70 hours thing, that's very, that's a very real reality. Oh, absolutely. Many people. Absolutely. <clears throat> Especially now. Especially now, for sure. Mm-hmm. It's really hard to make ends meet. Get that. <clears throat> but it's still important for you to have some self-care. And it doesn't take a lot. That's a, that's also the thing. It yeah. doesn't take a lot for you to live a healthy lifestyle, to live a, um, a healthier lifestyle. Literally five minutes a day, 10 minutes a day. You can find that. Mm-hmm. You can find five or 10 minutes a day to do something for yourself. Yeah. We we know it's funny that we were just talking about self-care last night. Five minutes a day. We know at a minimum that's what it takes to have positive mm-hmm. impact on in your mental, physical, emotional, spiritual well-being, right? Because yeah. it, our health isn't just physical, too. That's the other thing is so many people think about health and they just think about their body, right? How right. they look and how they feel going to the gym. But health is not just physical. Health is emotional. Health is mm-hmm. uh, mental. Health is spiritual. It's yeah. all of these things. You neglect one you're going to neglect the others. So if you're only mm-hmm. focusing on the physical health, you're literally ignoring 75% of the rest of the stuff that you should be doing and working yeah. on. Yeah. I don't know. It's all encompassing. This stuff all comes together. Okay. Mm-hmm. So the, the convenience, everything, if we tie it back to what we've been talking about, you know, going back to last week with increasing our metabolism and our need, that's exactly what we're talking about here. Yeah, exactly. Like how can you get more movement throughout the day with things that you're actually getting through convenience. They're taking away from your overall non-exercise activity thermogenesis in, in yeah. general, which is your need, which is what we talked about in last week's ep- episode. Right. And I get it too. You know, one of the common complaints we hear when we talk about being more intentional with your movement is like, I'm just too tired. Well, guess what? You're tired because you're not moving. Mm-hmm. Literally, your body needs movement. Yeah. If you're tired and sore and your muscles hurt and everything's cramped up. It's because you're not fucking moving. So we need to find ways to get quality movement into our day. If you want to feel better, if you want to have energy, you've got to move your ass at yeah. the end of the day. And Period. if you if you've been at the computer all day sitting, you're not physically tired, you're fucking mentally tired. Okay. Yeah. So get outside and take a walk, I'm refreshing air, and you might feel that you're not as tired which but is Beth, my mentally. job is so busy i can't take it i can't take a break during the day i can't do that yeah. my, i'm so important on my job i just can't take a break right 
<laughs> right. No, you're not. I'm sorry. I'm, no. Guys, listen, we, yeah. we, I'm not discounting what you all do for a living. I'm just, I'm sure you have awesome jobs and you are very important, but you're not that important. None of us are that important that you can't focus on yourself for five to 10 minutes. Yeah. Because here's the thing too. We're, we're going to start, start talking about self-care too. You cannot help others if you don't help yourself. What is the mm-hmm. first thing that the flight attendants tell you when they're going through their pre-flight checklist, right? In a case of an emergency, put your mask on first before helping others. Why mm-hmm. do you do that? Because if you're dead, you can't help other people. Right. <laughs> It's, I mean, that's a little extreme, but right. you can't help others. If you, you can't fill other people's cup if your cup's fucking empty. You're going to mm-hmm. crash and burn. Yeah. Okay. The people in your life, your employees, your spouse, your, your family, your children, your friends, they need you at 100%. They don't need you at 50%. They don't need you at 25%. So recharge your fucking batteries every day. Five minutes, 10 minutes. Recharge your batteries. Going back to what we we're talking about with uh, Dr. Josh yeah. Smith, right? Recharge those batteries. I get it. You're busy. Everybody's busy. You are extremely busy. You're a mother. You've got kids. You've got responsibilities. You got to take them to sports. You got to take them to all this stuff. But you are important too, and you matter, and your children need you at your best. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now that I just said that out loud, talking about taking your kids and who who hears a chaperone, right, for their kids, you're, you know, Mm -hmm. we're just taking our kids from appointment to appointment, sports events to sports events. But here's the thing I'm going to call some people out. I go, I take my son to most of his basketball practice, baseball practices, and, and things like that. Mm-hmm. Every practice I go to, guess what? The parents are sitting on the sidelines scrolling social media. The parents mm-hmm. are in their car scrolling social media. Guess what I'm doing? Walking. I'm out there walking. I'm out mm-hmm. I, or if I'm if I'm saying if I'm watching practice, guess what I'm doing? I'm standing. I don't need to sit at his practice. I sit 12 hours a day yeah. already with my job. I don't, I don't need to sit for another two hours mm-hmm. at my son's basketball practice. Yeah. I'm driving an hour there each way. I don't need to drive an hour, sit for an hour, and then go, go sit for another hour watching mm-hmm. his practice. No, yeah. I'm going to be exhausted. I'm going to feel like shit. Yeah. I'm, how I'm can, you, how can you guys use your time wisely? Yeah. Okay. You could, you, you could literally... Yeah, you can literally use that time to better yourself. Yeah. While you're while your kids were at their practice, go to the fucking gym. 30 minutes, 20 minutes. Go for a 10-minute walk. Do a couple of laps. Yeah. Meditate. Breathe. Journal. You can do all that shit sitting mm-hmm. down, but you're not. Oh yeah. You'd My son has yourself. has strength training right when he gets out of school. And I I need some steps. So what am I gonna do? I'm going to bring him in there and I'm going to walk the fucking parking lot a million times. I'm not going to sit there and scroll TikTok or make videos while he's I'm going to no, I'm going to get some walking in. Mm-hmm. Sorry, guys. <laughs> like this is this is the thing. We you need- do it too, you guys. We are not we are we are the same as you. I hope you guys understand that. We work desk jobs. We are online trainers, coaches. We run a business from online. What does that mean? We're on fucking line. <laughs> Beth, you're a fitness Uh-oh, coach. This is your job time. to be fit. I still have to prioritize my health. It, it's it's not easy. I get it. We're also parents. You know, Mm -hmm. that with kids that have busy schedules, Mm -hmm. um, you know, granted, I don't have three or four children, but I still have, you know, I still have to run a business, run a household. I'm a a business that has multiple employees. You run two businesses. So, yeah. And, you know, we we get it. We we are with you on this. We we know what you're going through. We know not every single person, but, you know, we can relate. Yes, we know you're busy. We are not saying this to be assholes or to dismiss how busy you are. What we are asking you to do and what we're telling you that you need to do is look in your busy schedule, find where you can sneak some movement in there. Mm -hmm. That's it. Do a time audit. I I would love everyone to just take a pen and paper and start writing everything that they do throughout the day down. Start writing all every single thing that you spend. Fifteen minute increments. Just estimate it. You know, you will find some time to sneak some movement in there. Oh, yeah. And I bet I, I could even call myself out if I did that. Oh, me too. Absolutely. If I did a, if I did a screen yeah. log audit right now on oh, my yeah. phone, like, mm-hmm. what do we need? You know, yeah, I, I exactly. get it. I mean, of course, it's it's hard for us because we, we rely so much on social media for our business. So it, it's not fair to kind of say that, I guess. But right. Um, yeah, we're not we're not sitting here judging or preaching, guys. We yeah. we we truly just want the best for you. And that's the thing. We we want you to be healthy, happy. And that's why most of you follow us, right? To get tips on that. So this is one of the things that- You, like our, no B, you like our no BS approach. You like the simplicity. No. Well, this is exactly. the, simpli- the simple shit that you need to be doing that you're not. Yeah. 
Have you ever wanted to start a podcast? Spotify's got a platform that lets you make one super easily and then distribute it everywhere and even earn money doing what you love. All in one place for free. It's called Spotify for Podcasters and here's how it works. Spotify for Podcasters lets you record and edit episodes right from your phone or computer, so no matter what your setup is like, you can start creating today. Then you can distribute your podcast to Spotify and everywhere else podcasts are heard. Now what's really cool is video podcasts are also now available on Spotify. And if you want to be taken seriously on social media, you need to have a video presence. And what better way to do that by connecting with people via your video episodes. With Spotify for podcasters, you can earn money in a variety of ways, including ads and podcast subscriptions. And best of all, it's all totally free with no catch whatsoever. And ever since we discovered Spotify for podcasters here on Cut the Crap with Beth and Matt, we are easily releasing new episodes and distributing them to multiple platforms, and it's never been easier. We highly recommend you give it a try. You can download the Spotify for Podcasters app or go to www.spotify.com slash podcasters to get started. We all know what we need to be doing, but we are not doing it. Why Correct. is that? goes back to our mindset, our, mm-hmm. thinking, our thinking errors, the way we think about things. Yeah. Is really what it comes down to. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Is there anything else you want to say say on that note? I don't know. I think that's. I think we kind of said a lot in, yeah. in a short we in did, a short we time period. <laughs> we did say a lot. <laughs> I'm, I gotta say, I'm loving these these episodes we've been doing recently. We I, love our one on ones. We really do, guys, because we're <laughs> we're able to really say a lot more. I feel like. Yeah. And that's not, we love our guests and we're still going to continue doing guest episodes, but we're going to get back to our roots here and start doing more one-on-one episodes. That's for Mm -hmm. sure. We're going to do some more Q and A's. Yeah. um, Also. Yeah, totally. We just talked about that earlier. So we had a Q and A episode we'll we'll be doing coming up Mm -hmm. in the next couple of weeks, I would imagine. Yeah. Uh, We should talk about our Hawking Hills. Um, Oh, fuck. Yeah. Yeah. So Cut the Crap Pod is doing a meet and greet hike in Mm -hmm. Ohio. You guys yep. have requested, and I know a lot of people are interested. So Hawking Hills, Saturday, October 28th at 10 a.m. We don't know the exact destination point. We should probably, yeah. I'm, I'm guessing there's probably a lot of different hikes to do there. There is. So so it's Hawking Hills State Park. So okay. there, there's lots of beautiful attractions there. What I'm thinking we'll probably do is Old Man's Cave, for sure. That's mm-hmm. like the most uh, iconic um, a scenic um, spot there. It, okay. It's this waterfall with a big swimming hole that you can go into. Mm-hmm. I'm definitely going to, I know it's going to be end of October, but like, fuck it. <laughs> I am swimming. I will be jumping in. Um, All right, so I'll, I'll, but <laughs> it's just because I'm fucking crazy like that. So good luck. <laughs> <laughs> I jumped into Lake Michigan last year in the middle of December and that was not fun. My so, God. Yeah. Um, it'll probably be a little bit warmer than that. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be warmer than Maybe that. not the air, but. <laughs> Yeah, who knows? Late October, it could be cold. It could be warm here in Ohio. Um, all okay. I know is it's going to be beautiful with the, the the foliage changing colors and everything. Yeah. Um, so definitely Old, old Man's Cave is going to be the destination. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I'm confident in saying that. It's just, you know, we'll meet at the trailhead or something there. So Okay. But, um, so, yeah, uh, we don't have a form out yet. I would imagine we'll probably get one here. It's still about six weeks away. So maybe okay. with a month or so, we'll start posting it. Um, yeah. That way people don't RSVP and then forget about it, you know? So just let this be the notice. We're going to be going to Hocking Hills for the next meet and greet or cut the crap. Super excited. Um, we have gotten a lot of feedback already since we announced it. And yeah. The people, some of the people are like, yeah, that was me that was saying to go here. I'm going to be there and everything. Good, so, good. Um, yeah. Re- yeah. Really excited. Really excited. I'm going to try to get some of my team to come out as well since a lot nice. of my team does live here in Ohio. Mm-hmm. Uh, you met Coach Kristen already at the first. Yeah, other we did here. That's in right. I believe um, Iris is coming. Coach Iris and maybe my oh, coach Pat, my nice. coach Patty might come too. So awesome. Where's Patty live at? Uh, Ohio, but I don't know exactly where. Really, I did not know that. I'll have to reach yeah. out to her. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Yeah, I hope yes. they come out. Yeah, me too. I know Iris. I think is with her husband. So. Sweet. Awesome. Awesome. Yes. So yeah. October twenty eighth, the next official cut the crap, me and greet with that mm-hmm. and Matt. I would imagine that the one we do after that is if we do get together in Florida, probably over the wintertime. Yeah. Probably, yeah. probably huh? Mm-hmm. 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 Other than that, I think that's all I've got. That's all I got. All right. Well, let's fucking end it then. All right. <laughs> all right. We'll see hey, any back. any questions or anything, guys, please send us some thoughts of what you, what you think about what we have to say. I, I'd yeah. love to hear from you guys. DM us. DM email, us. Email us at cutthecrappod at gmail.com. Yeah, because when we're up here ranting and raving, we want to know what you guys think of our ranting and raving. Like, it, yeah, we, you know, we we know it helps people, but we just want to know. Give exactly. us some feedback. Yeah. All right. Oh, sh- 
All right. Bye. 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 Hope you enjoyed this episode. So why not share it with a friend who needs to hear it? Send us a DM on Instagram or email us at cutthecrappod at gmail.com and join our Patreon at patreon.com slash cutthecrappodcast. As always, we appreciate you and thanks for being here.